Sir Charles III is the name of my beard. Eighth grade, I had a pedo sash, and then I thought, you know, why well, I look like a pedophile, you know, and then, and then for some reason when I shaved it, about a week later, all this came in. Uh, the McGuire heritage, you know, it's a long line of bearded men, some bearded men and monkeys. A long heritage, and you know, the the beard of my father and the beard before him, uh, Sir Charles Ferris and Sir Char Charles Jr. It's just, it's just a long line, and it just looks foil. You know, like Cinderella had the freaking slipper that fit her. I mean, this just fits me, like. Uh, my name's Patrick Green. Patrick Flint Green, for full effect. As you can see, my luscious follicle hair is, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just. Patrick does not have facial hair. You grow a little mustache up here, and a goatee down here. I usually shave once a week. Uh, sometimes I let it grow out, like no shave November, but that that always uh, upsets me. So you know, I I kind of shave it off. People people associate my beard and my luscious facial hair. They're like, that's great. That's him. I think of beards, I like to think of like Abe, like world's best beards, world's best beards of all time. Um, Cole Brenner's gotta be one. How do I care? Well, I have a beard comb. I got a full beard kit. It, it really depends, like how like how long it is. Uh, my beard comb. I just like to sit in my room, just you know, just make it look good. I I, I, sh I shave quite often, but it just it just grows back. Just... I shave for my mom. I shave my beard for Christopher Melvin Rodriguez. I shave for myself to look good. The relationship between two guys with facial hair, two guys with beards, is. It's unparalleled to any relationship. Mother, daughter, son, father. Pales in comparison to two guys with beard. We just look at each other and we say, we're family. I'm about to shave. Um, it's not usual for me to shave, but um, I got prom right out in the corner. My mom doesn't like it. But. I feel like I lost about 10 pounds off my face alone. <laughs> Change is always good. And, you know, like maybe like a different look every once in a while. I want people to be like, hey, he's attractive. But I want them to do that with and without the beard. It was the fifth grade. I remember it like it was yesterday. She was beautiful. Blonde hair, blue eyes, flawless. I couldn't have asked for a more ideal girl. There's this girl. She's in my second block English class. She's got um, beautiful hair, beautiful eyes. A recent crush I've had is, um, it was earlier this year. Um, he was in one of my classes last year and we lost connection over the summer. And I never really had the courage to talk to him, but all of a sudden he just started texting me and then you know, we actually hung out a couple times because I'm not that shy. Uh, the first time I saw her, it was like, I was in fifth grade, like I said earlier, and I went outside to play basketball because I used to do that a lot and just shoot around. And she lived a few houses down, so I, uh, I saw her outside and I knew I had to pull out of the Kobe moves. 
to impress her because you know that's that's what it was all about like I just wanted to impress her and show her that you know I'm the man. I want to say the first time I saw her was probably freshman year and you know back then I'll admit I was a little less courageous than I am now. I, I had some social awkwardness issues that I could not talk to members of the opposite gender well. The first time I realized I liked this person was last year. I hated this kid. I thought he was the most rude, obnoxious kid in my entire life. And then all of a sudden one day I just looked at him and I was like, he is hot. As far as us talking, like, I never got that far. I kind of just like gave her some looks and stuff, but I never actually talked to her. I was too afraid, so. It was this year that I really started to like this girl. Like, when I, I if I saw her happy, I felt happy. It was just this warming feeling and, like just came across me. Just seeing her smile, I felt, I knew I liked her. My favorite thing about this person was that I'm a very sarcastic person and they could handle my sarcasm with sarcasm back. Oh uh, no, I, n I, never, I never really talked to her or got to uh, tell her how I felt, but like later on in life I wind up running into her and like there was no feelings so... I have not told her that I liked her yet, but all I'm saying is be paying attention the next few weeks. And we had like a... Uh... A month fling or so, but nothing ever came of it. Surely something's wrong with me. High school is definitely going to be something I miss, but I feel like college is going to be a great new chapter. I am going to miss high school because I'm trying to get out of here and make that money. It's not a question, but, a lesson learned. but they went really fast, and everybody was pretty welcoming, so I liked it. I hope you had the time of your life. I missed the uh, team sports class that I had. <laughs> I will miss the football games. The sporting events, I think. And the friends. I like school. Yeah, it's not having to have like, a responsibility all the time. I am going to miss playing sports and uh, going to all the sporting events and just hanging out with friends. It's going to be, it, it'll be a lot different going away and uh, definitely have a lot more responsibility. I don't want, I don't want that. I'm not a big fan of change, so but it's part of life, you know, it's part of moving on and everything, so gotta go to college. Um yeah, I hate growing up, like I wish I could just be 18 forever. Uh, yeah, I don't want I don't want to go to college. I think I'm gonna miss it a lot. It's my guy. It's kiss. <laughs> oh yeah, I laugh all the time. It's all left. I'm Bruce I am not a woman. I mean, high school is always the process. That's the first step, but then the first step is college, and then life. My past four years of college have went well. They've, um, I've had a lot go for me. I'll miss Miss Moore. Or Miss Schroeder, I'll miss her. I'll miss. I hope you had the time of your life. Since I heard a melody. Melody of... I got into golf when I was
when I was about 11. My dad took me to the range, uh, got me my first set of clubs, and ever since then, I've been hooked on the game. Um, I got into golf because I lived on a golf course my whole life for about 14 years, and you know, I just grew up around a golf course and decided to play one day, and I just caught on to it. I got into golf around fourth or fifth grade, probably. My dad brought me my first set of clubs. Um, I want to say it was when I still lived in New York, and I didn't play much there, but once I moved to North Carolina, I started playing a lot more. I first got into golf when my Sunday school teacher took a group of the Sunday school boys out, and we played a couple holes, played about nine holes, and then it was just a good time. I enjoyed my experience, learned to have fun. Golf, I would say, is a lot harder to perfect than other sports. Um, you have to practice almost every single day if you want to maintain a high level of skill. Um, other sports you can kind of just pick it up and play pretty good, but golf you have to practice all the time. Golf takes a lot of uh, knowledge and skills, and then there's multiple different parts to golf. Yeah, so many different parts of the game. As where if you play football, the lineman just blocks every play. He doesn't have to do different parts like you do in golf. It takes a lot and a lot a lot of work to perfect your skills. Like you, some sports, you can kind of just do your own thing, just chill and just be fine at it, but golf, you have to work hard. There's no way you're going to be good at golf if you're not working hard. When you're playing by yourself, you know, it's nice, but you don't have a lot of other people to compete with, but when you're on a team, you're in constant competition with all the other, other players on the team, and it makes you a better, more well-rounded player. Golf is usually an individual sport, but it gives you that community of people that you can go up against and get better with, and they can teach you things that you might not have known. Uh, the Cuthbert and Golf team beat Marvin Ridge in a match, and that was very memorable. Um, it was a big celebration afterwards. Um, my first round under par was a 71, and that was like the biggest day of my, my uh, career. And um, I've never had a hole-in-one, but my first eagle was also really memorable. So. I do enjoy golf a lot. Um, I've been playing it for about five years now, and I practice almost every single day. It's really fun to play because it's really it's relaxing. In my future with golf, I probably I see myself playing just probably the same amount, just occasionally on the weekends with a few friends. Um, I that's my goal to play in college, but we'll see where uh, life takes me. I'd like to play college golf, and I'm going to be going into the professional golf management. Uh, degree and so once I get that degree I'm going to be going into fields of uh, doing s certain jobs with involving golf in the future. Melody of mystery a tempting refrain has My name is Josh Hazlitt. I'm a junior at Cuthbertson High School. My name is Gabby Strevey. I'm a senior here at Cuthbertson High School. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Raymond Capone. I've uh, been attending Cuthbertson High School for the last three years now. I'm a junior. Uh, my name is Nathan. I go to Cuthbertson and I'm 17 years old. Uh, I'm, I'd say I've kind of lost touch in reading. It's not really my thing. I think it's kind of lame, actually. I don't really read that much, to be honest. I just kind of read when it's like school assigned. I don't read that much during the school year because I don't have that time, but usually during the summers, or if I do have time, I read quite a bit. I do read a good amount of books. I'm not really, it's not something that I have to do, but it's something that I enjoy doing. And I just kind of do it when I feel like it. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that high schoolers are starting to read less than they used to because of all the other distractions now, like TVs and like everybody has their phone and like social media and also just the way the world's starting to work. You can do everything through your phone and there's a lot more electronics and stuff to be doing with your free time. You realize and you can just like, if you want to learn something or get something, you just Google it and it's right there, like reading, you know, you gotta take the time and go through it. 
um, just around teenagers especially is at an all-time low and it's just going to continue to keep going down. Reading really isn't as important as it used to be because like, of all the technology that we've had. So I think we got movies for it, so when you just watch a movie, you don't have to read it. I do see reading as a very important part in like growing and developing because when you read, you kind of, depending on what you read, you can like unleash like a creative side, you can learn how to like see things in a different point of view. I think that reading helps young adults grow because you learn new words through books and learn new, uh, get new ideas from all the I think reading is pretty important because it kind of helps you to, in a way, problem solve. If there's a word or a phrase you don't know, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. And you're going to have to try to work through a book like you have to work through a problem. So I don't really think that we'll see a negative effect from teenagers not reading. Um, just because of, like, we don't really need to read as much as we used to since we have the internet and, like, all that information at our fingertips. With all these people no longer reading, I think what it's gonna do is um, it's gonna it's gonna bring down the originality and the creativity, and we're gonna see a lot less of that. And it's gonna be more more of a one one type of mindset that we're gonna see. And I don't really think it's gonna bring much good. One seems to know a thing about this melody. Ta-da-da! -da.